listen to the words of this song very closely because some of you may have the same testimony. Today I thought about from whence I've come. It is not of myself, least any man should boast. It's only by His grace I'm saved through Him. It's only by His grace I'm delivered through Him. Set me be free, and I thank Him for eternal life. I've given my heart, my soul, my mind to Him. It's only by His grace I say to Him. It's only by His grace I'm delivered.
because of you, Lord. It's only because of you, Lord. You're worthy. We give you the honor. We give you the praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. as I stand this morning, this afternoon, before these, your precious people, I take it not for granted. I yield myself of self that the Holy Spirit that lives within me will be in full control. Oh God, it's not my voice that they will hear, but that they will hear your voice as you speak through me. It's not me that they will see as I stand here, oh God, but the anointing that's upon my life. And as your word go forth, that it will accomplish all that pleases you. Burdens will be removed, yokes will be destroyed, your people will be delivered and set free. Oh, hallelujah, but most of all, we thank you for salvation. Thank you for the lost souls that will give their hearts to you today. Open our ears to hear and our hearts to receive what thus says the Lord. We thank you in advance and we claim it all done in the matchless name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Always serve an awesome God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And we're going to get right into the word of God. And as you're standing, the reading of God's word, I want you to turn with me to Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 7. And if you don't have your Bible, scriptures will be posted on the screen in my to my, here to my left. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse seven. And then we're gonna go to Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse two. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse two. 
but we will read first from Ephesians 1 and 7. Truly, Pastor D and our praise team ministered to us out of their spirits. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ephesians, the first chapter, verse 7 says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And then if you will turn to Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 2. Excuse me. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, verse 22. And it says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood is no remission of sin. This morning, the title of our lesson or our message is the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. God has great things in store for you, for me, for the body of Christ. And God has taken her, taken us someplace. He wants to do great exploits in and through the body of Christ and in and through us individually as we have moved forward into the year of 2022. Our theme is moving forward, no limits. In other words, take the limits off of God and take the limits off what God can do in and through you as we move forward in the year of 2022 and beyond. In order for God to do all that he wants to do in and through us, we need to realize what we have in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because where he's taken us, what he wants to do in and through us cannot be done in and of ourselves, but it's going to be done through the blood of Jesus, through the power of the blood of Jesus. So today, we want to look at some of the benefits that we have through the blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. There is no greater gift that God has given to us than his son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And with the shedding of his blood, with him dying on the cross and shedding his blood, his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and he got up out of the grave and he got up with victory. And because he got up, we get up. Because he's victorious, we are victorious. That's the precious gift that God has given to us. His son came and there's many, many, many benefits that came with the resurrection. And because of the resurrection and because we have victory today, in order for us to walk in all that God has given us, we need to know what we have. We need to know what's in the blood of Jesus. We need to know what he accomplished for us when he got up out of the grave. We need to know that we have victory because what you don't know, you can't operate in. So today, I wanna share with you some of the things that Jesus accomplished for us when he rose with all power in his hand. We want to look at some of the things that the wonder working power of Jesus accomplished for us when he got up out of the grave with all power and all authority in his hand, we need to know. We need to know what he meant when he said, it's finished. 
is finished. The things that he came to do for us, that the Father sent the Son from heaven to do for us, when he died on the cross and he gave up his life and he said, it's finished. And when he got up out of the grave, he got up with victory. And because he got up with victory, guess what? We get up with victory. Hallelujah. So we want to look at some of the things that Jesus accomplished for us when he got up out of the grave with all power and victory in his hand. Now, there are so many that we cannot talk about all of them today. But we are going to deal with just four of the things that our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ accomplished. And if you're taking notes, write these down. Four of the things, four of the benefits that we have today because of the blood of Jesus. Number one, we have forgiveness. Number two, we are cleansed. Number three, we have redemption. And number four, justification. Number one, forgiveness. Number two, cleanse. Number three, redemption. And number four, justification. Hebrews 9 and 22 says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Our forgiveness come through the shedded blood of Jesus Christ. Because when he went to the cross, he paid a price for us that we could not pay for ourselves. We were born, all of us, with a sin nature because of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And there was a sin debt that we owed that we could not pay because in our veins, the blood was not pure. And the sacrifice that our Lord and our Savior required, the penalty for our sin was death. And it could only be paid through a spotless lamb. The blood could not be contaminated. And our blood was contaminated. So there was no one that could pay the price for the sin debt that we owe. But God in his unconditional love, loved us so much until he sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to come to this sin sick world to pay our sin debt, a debt that only he could pay. We could not pay it in and of ourselves. So because of what Jesus did, because of his blood, we are forgiven. Hallelujah. And that's good news today, church. We are forgiven from our sins. And not only are we forgiven from our sins, but guess what? We are cleansed. Hallelujah. Hebrews tells us, Hebrews 9 and 14 tells us that we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. How many of you know that's good news today? That's good news today. That means that we are forgiven and we are cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And no man can hold us in condemnation. Hallelujah. Because of the redemption. Yes. We are forgiven. We are cleansed. And we have redemption. Forgiveness, cleansing, and, forgive, and redemption 
that we have in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, so we can live in victory. In other words, no one can come to you and tell you about where you've been, what you've done. But if they do, you can let them know who you are in Christ. See, people you knew before you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and you're excited and you want to share with them about what God has done and is doing for you, they will say to you possibly, well, you know what? I know you. I knew you back in the day. And here's the answer to that. Yes, you did. Maybe you did, but I don't know who you're talking about now. That person you're talking about is dead. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And it's because of the blood of Jesus. Amen. We can be like Paul. When they came to Paul in the scriptures, and Paul is giving his testimony and talking about his life, Paul said, I've wronged no man. How could Paul say he wronged no man? Paul was a murderer. Paul chased the Christians down and went after them to have them put in jail and stoned to death. But then Paul said, I wrong no man. How could Paul say that? He could say that because of the precious blood of Jesus. You can say the same thing to David, regardless to what your past look like. Don't let anybody hold you in condemnation of what you've done or where you've been. Hallelujah. The church is made up of all of us, of people of where we've been and what we've done in the past. But we are forgiven. We are cleansed by the precious blood of Jesus. And we have redemption today. See, these are the things that you need to know as you move forward in 2022. And as you take the limits of what God can do in your life and take the limits off of God, because the enemy is gonna always come to you. He know the greatness that God has put in you. He know where God is taking you. The things that's far beyond what you can even imagine or think Satan wants to hinder those things by coming to you and reminding you of your past and telling you what you cannot do that's why you need to know the blood of Jesus you need to know what's in the blood of Jesus what the blood accomplished for you there's power as the song says wonder working power in the precious blood of Jesus. Oh, that's a reason to get excited today, church. We need to know what God accomplished for us in order to move forward to know what God will do and can do in and through us. See, when you know the power in the blood, when you know what God has accomplished for you and through you, you can walk into your destiny and into your future with a confidence, with a boldness, with an assurance, knowing that it shall come to pass. Why? Because I'm covered with the precious blood of Jesus. Glory be to God. I am forgiven of all of my sins. Satan, get behind me. Don't tell me about my past. You want to remind me of my past and I'm going to tell you about my future where God has taken me. I am forgiven, covered with the precious blood of Jesus. We're talking about the blood, the blood. Oh, it's all in the blood today, church. And I am being cleansed. I was dirty. I was sinful. I was messed up. I was lost. I was hopeless. But the blood of Jesus has cleansed me from all unrighteousness. Oh, hallelujah. And I stand here today in freedom freedom glory be to God and then I'm redeemed what am I redeemed from the curse the curse of the devil I'm redeemed from the tricks of the enemy no longer can he hold me in bondage no chains no shackles I have freedom I have been redeemed so when the enemy come to you you know what you do you put him under your feet where he belonged. He belonged under your feet. Stand on what God has done for you. 
through the power in the blood of his son, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So you have the name of Jesus that you can use. And we talk about wonder working power in the name of Jesus. Do you know what that wonder working power is? That's in the name of Jesus. Because see, if you don't know what you're talking about, Satan will beat you up with that name. Hallelujah. You know, he had the sons of Sceva running. They was using their name. He said, no, we don't know you. And they beat him up and ran him out. But when you know the name of Jesus and know what it represents and the authority that's in the name of Jesus, when you use that name in the authority that's been given to you, power and authority in that name is yours. Hallelujah. I'm reminded. Hallelujah. Of the man. That was by the gate beautiful. He was a beggar. Every day somebody brought him to the gate to beg. Just think about that. Every day somebody had to get him, bring him, sit him down, let him beg all day, come get him, take him back home. Every day they brought him to sit and beg. And this particular day, Peter and John was coming to the gate beautiful, getting ready to go in for prayer. And the beggar is sitting there and he's got his cup and he's begging and he said, arms, 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 give me something, give me something, help me out, help me out. You know how I go, help a brother out. I don't have anything, drop something in. Come on, man, give me a little something. Come on, come on. He's begging. And Peter and John looks on him and he tells them, he said, he, they tell, he tells the man, they tell the man, look on us. It said, now, silver and gold, we don't have. In other words, listen, you come here every day and you beg for money. And people give you a little bit of money and you spend that money and you have to come back the next day and beg and the next day and beg. So what you are looking for is something that a parish that you'll need to come back for every day. We don't have any of that. But guess what? What we have is better than what you're asking for. We don't have silver and gold. But in the name, all oh, there's power in the name of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, rise up and walk that's the power in the name of Jesus that's what we have because of the finished work of Calvary because Jesus shed it his blood and he gave us that authority before going back to be with the father so when you are going through your changes and the enemy wants to beat up on you you need to tell him just like Peter and John in the name of Jesus hallelujah in the name of Jesus, I am healed. In the name of Jesus, my lost child is going to turn their lives around and come to our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, I decree it so. I declare it so. So you need to start making some declarations in the name of Jesus and standing on it. Now, you don't see it today, you don't see it tomorrow, and you don't see it the next day. But what are you going to do? You're going to keep on standing on the word of God and watering that seed. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I have victory over the devil in every area of my life. I don't give him any place. We're talking about the blood of Jesus and what the blood of Jesus purchased for us when Jesus died and gave his life and shed his blood for us. On Calvary. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And we are justified. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Second Corinthians 5 and 21 says, when I am justified, that is, is just as it never happened. That's what I'm saying when I said justified. It's just as it never happened. As we said, when the enemy come to you and tell you about your past, God remembers it no more. Those things that you did in the past, 
They are under the blood of Jesus, and it's just as if it didn't happen. You know, you can be in the bed at night, and the enemy will come to you about your past and about something that you did. Maybe it's something you said. You know, sometimes we say things we shouldn't say, and the enemy want to beat up on you at night. But when you go to God and you ask for forgiveness, you're cleansed from that, and God has forgiven you. But the enemy will come to you and want to hold you in guilt and condemnation. That's when you need to tell him, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know what you're talking about. It's just as if it didn't happen. You forgive yourself. See, many of us are living in guilt because we haven't forgiven ourselves. And God has forgiven us. So how are you going to move forward if you're letting your past hold you behind? Forgive yourself. You've been forgiven. You've been cleansed. Hallelujah. You have redemption through the blood. And you have been justified. All church, that's good news. That's good news. See, you need to know, as I previously said, what God has done for you in order for you to live in that victory. Because you can live in this life as a Christian and go to heaven defeated not enjoying any of the blessings down here that God has for you. But God wants you to enjoy this life. He said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He don't want you living defeated here until you get to heaven to enjoy what God has for you up there. He has blessings for you down here. Amen. You want you to live in victory. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to end on this. How many of you like cheese and crackers? Like cheese and crackers? Come on, raise your hand if you like cheese and crackers. Oh, amen. Now, put your hands down. How many of you want to eat cheese and crackers every day? Where's the hands? How many of you want to eat cheese and crackers all day and that's all you eat? How many of you want to eat cheese and crackers for a week? Two weeks. I'm reminded of a story of a man that lived, I believe it was in Europe. And he wanted to come to the United States. And he was poor. He worked hard. And he saved all this money. And every little penny or Every little bit he got over his expense, he saved. And eventually he had saved enough money to purchase a ticket on the boat coming over to the United States. That was his dream, to come to the United States. So he purchased his ticket and had a few pennies left and he went and bought a suitcase and he filled it up with cheese and crackers. And he got on the boat and he's coming. And every day when the people would go into the dining area and they were eating delicious meals, he could smell the food. It smells so good. And he would go over to this corner and sit and eat his cheese and crackers. Day after day, people going in, enjoying the meals. He'd see them smiling and smelling the food, and they were talking about how delicious it was. And he would go over and sit in the corner and have cheese and crackers. At night, he'd even dream about the food. He could still smell it, but he did not go into the uh, dining area. He would sit in the corner and have cheese and crackers. And a couple of days before they had reached their destination here in the United States, one of the men came over to him and said, hi, how are you doing? He said, I'm doing fine. And he, they exchanged names. And the guy said, let me ask you a question. You always sit over here to the side and, and you're having cheese and crackers. Why don't you come into the diner 
with the rest of us and enjoy the meals. The food is delicious. Oh, it's really good. They lay out a feast. And the man looked at him and he said, because I don't have any money to buy food. The guy looked at him and she said, really? Your ticket was an all-inclusive. Your meals was paid for. He was eating cheese and crackers and he could have been feasting. Let me ask a question. How many Christians are eating cheese and crackers and you can be feasting today? Because of what God has paid for for you when he sent his son Jesus and he died on the cross. We don't want any cheese and cracker Christians in the house today. Hallelujah. Do you receive it? Come on and give God praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for your word that has went forth. God, and we thank you that it has ministered to the hearts of your people. We give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. What you're doing in the lives of your people through the power of your word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. To those of you that are here today or that are watching via live streaming, we never want to close a service without giving you the opportunity to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. So I want to give you that opportunity right now. Stop whatever it is that you're doing. Pray the sinner's prayer after me. Lord, I'm a sinner. In need of a savior, I believe that Jesus died for my sins, rose on the third day, now seated at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for me. Come into my heart, save me now. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Those words that you just spoke out of your mouth, if you believe them in your heart, hallelujah, glory to God, you are now saved. Let me be the first to welcome you to the body of Christ. All the angels in heaven are rejoicing over the decision that you have just made. All to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you're ever in the Aurora, Naperville area, come and share your testimony with us. We want to rejoice with you in the quality decision that you've just made. But if you're not in this local area, I want to encourage you to get into a good Bible teaching church that you might grow in wisdom and knowledge in the things of God. And go on to be all that God has created you to be. God bless you. Hallelujah. And at this time, my assistant pastor, Pastor D, will come. Well, hallelujah, saints. Did our pastor not bring the word of God today? Amen. Hallelujah. Give her a good God bless you. She brought the word today on the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. So right now, we just like to uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, you could have joined, you could have gone anywhere today, but you chose to be with us. And that for that, we are eternally grateful. For those of you who have continued to support this ministry throughout uh, this pandemic, we want to say thank you as well. And those watching us via live stream, we want to say thank you. Uh, now is the appointed time. If you'd like to sow into this ministry that has a global vision of spreading the love of Christ throughout the world, please go to our website, <clears throat> Love of Christ Worship Center. 
loveofchristworshipcenter.org. It's loveofchristworshipcenter.org. Visit the page that says giving, follow the simple instructions, um, and we truly appreciate it. If you'd like to text to give, uh, please text the word give, G-I-V-E, to 708-377-2911. Again, that's 708-377-2911, and follow the simple instructions there. Um, and we'd like to say thank you for what you do for us each and every week. Amen. And lastly, before we close out this this service, we'd like to pray. Um, well, first, we'd like to give you an opportunity if you'd like to be a part of this local ministry and you'd like to join this church and you're not here in the Aurora area, maybe you're in another part of the country, um, we ask that you go to our website again, which is Love of Christ worshipcenter.org and visit the tab that says membership okay membership and follow the simple instructions and you can be a part of this local ministry <clears throat> and we look forward to sending you out some material and paraphernalia that will help you in your walk with Christ so again if you'd like to be a part of this local ministry go to our website and press the tab that says membership and join Love of Christ Worship Center. Amen. So let us pray right now. We'd like to pray for those that are in attendance as well as those that are watching us around the world. If you um, would like to stand in proxy for someone, if you have a special prayer request, we also encourage you to please email me at Pastor Darnell at Love of Christ Worship Center. We do get those emails. We do respond to them, and we do take those prayer requests seriously. So let us bow our heads. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this time together. We thank you for each and every person that has come and been a part of this wonderful anointed service. We thank you for our pastor who has delivered the word from on high. And now, Lord, we pray for all those under the sound of my voice, we pray for our teachers and our administrators that are continuing to educate around the globe. We pray for our first responders. We pray for our fire departments, our law enforcement, and all of our health care providers, from pharmacists um, to doctors and nurses. We thank you, Lord, for their services. And now, Lord, as we hold them all up before you, we ask that you cover them with the blood of Jesus because we know there is power in the blood of Jesus, the power of deliverance, the power of safety, and the power of protection. So we plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one, everyone under the sound of my voice, as well as our military. And we ask you, Lord, to protect them, to strengthen them, encourage them, that they may walk in the favor of God and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit as they go about their daily activities, sacrificing and giving of themselves to make sure that the rest of us are safe. We give you praise and we give you honor and we give you glory in advance in the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And for those of you that are here in attendance, we also want to give you an opportunity um, before we close this service, if you like prayer, just lift your hands and we'd like to have you, we'd like to pray with you as well. Those of you that are here that may want to be a part of this local ministry, uh, you will have an opportunity um, to also join this, this church. So if that is you, please make sure that you see one of our ushers uh, or one of our staff and we'll be more than happy to lead you um, and welcome you into the body of Christ here at Love of Christ Worship Center. Amen. So let us all stand. Let's not forget that as your way out, please don't for Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're, we have communion, which we will do after, um, after we're done with our live stream. So we just want to say to those that are joining us via live stream as we close that out, thank you for joining us. It has been indeed a pleasure and an honor. Uh, to worship with you today and remember that Jesus loves you and so do we and we look forward to seeing you on next time. God bless you.